So welcome everybody. It's Thursday the 14th of May 2020. Uh, welcome to a Tilt webinar with Paco Fernandez, Harness the Power of Music. I'm Helen Myers, I'm Chair of the AWL, that's the Association for Language Learning London branch. Um, in the room also is Joe Dale, who is the wonderful independent languages consultant. If you need anything, if you need to know anything about languages and ICT, just get in touch with him. And also, we're really lucky that in the room is Heike Philp, who's helped us an awful lot to find out how to use the tech over the years, over the last 10 years, actually. So thank you to her. The person, of course, you're particularly here to see is Paco, primary and secondary MFL teacher and lead practitioner and working in the Cam Academy Trust. And this you can see by the title, Music is His Thing, the link between music and memory, and he's going to be doing a PhD project, so soon it's going to be Dr. Fernandez, monitoring second languages, language learners out of school exposure through online music streaming services and music-based language learning apps. So we're going to be learning about that today. We really hope that you are members of AWL or that you will join AWL. Please use this time to write in the chat if you're a member to encourage others to join. It's the unique association representing language teachers um, and it would be great to have even more people joining a lot of these things are really run because of volunteers people giving of their time the organizing the presenting and it would be great for you to join um, you'll be able to see everything to do with the webinars we've been doing on our AWR London page just go on to webinars and then there's a list of all the ones that we've had we're up to about number 62 I think something like that and Joe's brilliant. He just keeps on churning up the people who he's managing to round up. <laughs> so what have we got coming up? Um, we've got app smashing that's going to be going on on the, and I haven't put the date there. That's next Tuesday, isn't it? Yes, next Tuesday. And then on the 21st, next, next, this time next week, you're going to have Carrie Ann Wynne James is going to be doing some quizzes. And then the following Tuesday, we've got something about um, ThingLink. Yeah. Um, Francois Stalder and David Shanks is going to be talking to anybody who's looking for jobs or were, you know, concerned about their NQT year next year. He's going to be doing a session there, very, very popular. So please do let people know about that. Um, we have an etiquette which we show here just to make it clear what our rules are and in particular that we're happy to host speakers and participants free of charge. Speakers and participants are responsible for what they say. So let's get on to the main thing now, and I'm going to be passing over to Paco, who's going to be talking about Harness the Power of Music, and Joe is going to be particularly moderating the session. If you could keep your um, audio and your video off during this, that would be great. Heike and I will be uh, turning people, people's um, audio and video off if necessary. So over to you, Paco. Thank you very much, Helen, and, and thank you, Joe, for having me. An absolute privilege. And um, thank you to everyone that's joining us live today. Um, thank you to those that will be watching this at a later stage in its um, recorded version too. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Paco Fernandez. Just going to share my screen now to show you a couple of things. And uh, I've been teaching for seven years. Um, most of the teaching I've done has been uh, Spanish. Uh, I've done a bit of French as well. So, but Spanish is my main specialism. I'm, I'm Spanish native as well. And I've always been really interested in, in the use of music in the languages classroom, mainly because I'm, I'm a musician myself. But I would always say it a million times every time I go and, and, and do a talk, you do not need to be a musician to be able to use music. You just need to like music and enjoy it. And, and that's essentially it. So very, very important. Uh, if you haven't yet been, um, if you have not yet been to my site, then this, um, there's the link there. Um, that's where I tend to upload uh, most of my ideas. And, and also you'll be able to find um, many of the talks that I've done. So it'd be, it'd be some of the ideas that you'll see today, you'll be able to find it in the talks that I, that I have done in the past. More, most particularly the one that I did at the language show uh, back in November. Uh, so I'll be taking quite a few things from, from that talk and, and, and sharing uh, with you some of those ideas. Um, so, so yeah, you can, you can certainly visit my website there. I'm hoping that everyone is, is seeing my screen. Um, when uh, we're looking at a song, when we're looking at music, um, over the years, there's always been many questions raised about, you know, what was the most efficient and effective way of doing it? Um, so I have compiled a few ideas for you uh, to, to give it a go. Uh, but this is essentially how I've used music myself over the years. Um, there's many, 
there's certainly many ways to and many options there for, for people to, to cover different skills as well because sometimes when you see music and feel like it is only listening and reading and but you know there's so much more to it so just some ideas there and like I said this this was part of a talk that I did back in November and you can find in detail and very very thoroughly a breakdown of those different activities with different stones in today's session though, because um, there's not gonna be a lot of time to do all the things that I wanted to do, uh, but I, I found this really funny because every time um, every time I do a talk, I, I just present my attendees with this analogy of like using Lego as, as, as in learning being all about learning blogs and, and moving from one to another. Um, but this just shows um, potentially the difficulty of the various different websites that you're going to be seeing today. Um, it, it doesn't mean that things like Spotify and Apple Music and Music as much are, are hard, are harder than using lyrics training, but just essentially we're going to be uh, we, doing it by steps. And, and so we're going to build up the level of difficulty, hopefully, um, and this will be accessible for everyone. So even if you're not very confident with your IT, um, I'm just starting uh, from the very basic, most basic thing of all, um, and then building it up. So at the end of the session, there's going to be a couple of websites which are a bit harder. Um, and if you want to get your head around those, you certainly need to play with them a bit more. But um, in, in, in the meantime, we'll start from, from the very beginning and, and we'll uh, work our way up and I will say, and hopefully you'll you'll be able to to enjoy. So the first site uh, is uh, lyrics uh, lyrics training, uh, which I'm sure that um, a lot of you are familiar with. That you may have used this site before. If you haven't, I certainly recommend you to go online and try out. Um, the the interface is is pretty simple. Uh, so if, if I just open it here, you can see there's my account there, and and you can select the language. Um, and you can certainly uh, play a song and, and do like a gut feel activity. Uh, now there's two different modes. So if I, if I click on play now, uh, you can certainly have the mode in which you just fill in words, especially if you're doing the beginner level with a drop down of choices. Uh, but you can also have the one in which you just need to write up whatever it is that you've, that you've heard. Um, I have to say, I don't, I don't use this very often um, in this mode. Essentially the reason why I don't use it is because uh, it does not allow me, there's nothing on this website that would allow me to uh, track the progress that my students are making. And it's, it's one of the things that I'm currently researching and, and trying to work really hard is, is finding sites and, and, and encouraging a lot of these sites by you know sending them emails, uh, requesting it, if that is something that they are considering doing, uh, because at the end of the day, if we want to include music as part of our, you know, our teaching, and I'm, I'm now more than ever, considering that given the circumstances we're doing a lot of remote teaching, then, then we want to see exactly what the students are doing. And it, it, it's okay to say, you can send a screenshot over, but that's, that's just not enough. I, I think we need much more than that. So this is a really basic site. So do, do have a look at it. Um, the reason why I wanted you to, um, to know a bit more about lyrics training is because when I use lyrics training, I, I just use this uh, option here, which is called uh, print lyrics. And uh, this is pretty basic. You'll always find it at the bottom of any of the songs that you select. Um, so remember again, you want to have an account. You want to make sure that you've selected the right language. And then you want to click on that option there. And I'm just going to do this with an example of um, an example of a song uh, that I did in French not long ago. So I'm going to type the title there. Remember, I have to select French, otherwise it won't show. Uh, so I'm going to select French. So there. I'm going to type the title up of a song. I love this song, and I thought it'd be fantastic to, um, to use it with my um, students. And the reason why I used this song is because I noticed that uh, there seems to be quite a lot of third-person present tense structures. So once I click on print, uh, this is pretty easy, probably the most efficient and effective way of creating a gut fill. You literally select the words that you want. So uh, there's a third person there. Uh, there's a third person there. I have to say that 
French makes it a bit harder but because there's an apostrophe and it links both words together. So it's not just an individual word as opposed to Spanish. It's, it's mostly going to be at times two words together. So you need to be aware of that when you're doing your activities. There's another one there. I may be missing some of them, but remember, this is only an example. There's another third person there and another one there and another one there and another one there. And what we can do is we can, we can leave it there just to show you exactly how it works. So this is something that people will find really, really useful. Now, mind you, I'm using Google Chrome. So this will vary depending on the browser. Uh, I use Google Chrome uh, for this example, but if you're using another one, it, it may just be that the layout is completely different. So when you click on print now, here's the magic, of course, um, there's an option there on Google Chrome, which is very, very handy excuse me, called uh, Save as PDF. Um, uh, Paco, Paco, just to be very clear, we, at the moment we're just seeing the lyrics training page. Is that what you're trying to show us? Are you just seeing the lyrics training page? Yeah. Okay. Let me just find, I mean, I'm sharing my whole desktop here. Uh -huh. uh, let me take it. Are you seeing me clicking on print now? Yes, I, we can see that now. So we, we were seeing your presentation as opposed to the web page. Yeah, we can see that. Yeah, we can see the print window now. That's fine. Okay, fantastic. Maybe there was a bit of a delay there because I've definitely shared the, the whole desktop here. No problem. Thank reason. you. Okay, so just just double checking then. Um, yeah, Safe as PDF will give you the opportunity to print this off. Although if you want to be a bit more environmentally friendly and you're using things like Google Classroom and uh, Teams, then you might potentially want to attach it um, as, as, as the work there and, and distribute it um, to your students. Uh, the key thing here is that there's an option called more settings. Um, and what that does is it allows you to have more than one page. Um, uh, this is really good uh, because it then allows you to, to change the size of it so, so that you can play with that and uh, make it a bit bigger. I only want to keep it on one page, so I'm just going to go up to one, one forty, just to give you an example. See if that works. Oh, that's way too big. One thirty. Well, we'll keep it at one thirty, and then I can save it. Uh, and if I save it, then voila, I'll be able to save it there as a PDF. And and that's essentially that's essentially the only reason why I use lyrics training for. Um, you can create your own exercises on lyrics training. If, if I just go back to it um, by clicking on new exercise and you can certainly personalize uh, your learning for your students, but uh, there's no way again to track down their progress. And, and that makes things a bit hard because you don't want to be asking for um, screenshots as a way to check whether they've done the work or not. Um, but yeah, pr pretty basic site. I really, really hope, um, it's fantastic certainly for, for learning about gut fields, but I really hope that they improve that, that area of uh, progress tracking again and, and that they give you a, a huge variety of things that you can do with it, not, not just gut fields. I, I think, um, I think that would be fantastic. Uh, pa see? Paco, sorry for interrupting, but because your screen froze, could you maybe just show us quickly again how you went back to generate that worksheet. Would that be okay? Because that wasn't captured on the recording. I can, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So if you go on to the actual sum, you have selected your gaps, then you click on print now. But how do you, how do you get to that point? If you just go back oh, a sorry. step. Let's go all the way back then. Is that okay? Sorry, because we, we couldn't see that bit. Yeah, thank it's you. It's all right. I think my internet is probably not the best. Um, so yeah, you, you have the song that you want to play. So I found it there. I'm going to type it again. I really hope it works this time. And then you click on the song and then at the very bottom, you click on print lyrics. Then from print lyrics, it will open up this window. And in here, you can select whichever gaps you want. The ones that I chose earlier were the ones to do with a uh, third person present in French. I hope you can all see this yep, now. That's excellent. Thank okay. you so much. You click on print now. Uh, and then from there, just like I said, it's, it's important that you can play with the settings, but it will just give you the options to make it bigger, smaller, um, and whichever way you want it. And, and yeah, like I said, maybe not the most uh, you know, environmentally friendly uh, alternative, but I, I would tend to attach it sometimes if I've got like a one note um, classroom added to my, uh, to my Microsoft. I would tend to attach it there for them to complete it potentially with a stylus. Um, that, that's just 
that's just an option whilst you just attach the audio as well separately or something. Um, so that's lyrics training for you. Pretty, pretty basic stuff. Um, moving on to a different one. Uh, so, so this is lyrics gaps and the lyrics gaps, uh, you can do many more things. Um, I think the issue with this uh, site is that at least the issues that I have experienced whenever I'm sharing it with my students is that every time you create a new account and you save your login details, it just seems to it just seems to ask you to re-enter your password and then it says it's incorrect. So it, it allows you to, uh, as a teacher to log on as a with a Twitter account as a teacher, but uh, obviously for students, we know what it's like to do this remote teaching and I keep getting requests every day, honestly, about you know passwords not being uh, validated and, and stuff like that. So very important to bear that in mind before you get started. So you can, you can certainly play a bit with the site, just going to open it here um, and show you a little bit about lyrics gaps. Um, so what you do obviously here, once, once you manage to log on, I'm gonna try and do that on Twitter. There you go. Hope this will work. Yeah, fantastic. So you're, you're logged in now. So, so you'll have, again, you'll have an option of languages there. You can see it there uh, on the site, all languages uh, you wanna choose, whichever language you want to be um, asking your students, uh, students to practice. Uh, so in, in this case, we can do some Spanish instead. And you're going to get a breakdown here of various different songs, but you also have them organized in alphabetical order. Um, the reason why I like lyrics gaps a bit more than lyrics training is because there is an, an, an option here at the very top. If you look at the top menu, that is great. It's teacher's area. Now, let me tell you, I'm not going to go, not going to go into a lot of detail about it, but the only thing that you can do is set a few gap fills and then the system will automatically generate a score out of 100%. That's as much as you can go in terms of activities here. But if I click on it and show you some of the stuff that I've done, well, you can see my groups. Now, if I went inside this, especially by clicking on stats, um, you could then see what students have done out of 100%. So the system will automatically generate a score. Now, you may be wondering, so how do I go about obviously ge generating a sum that I want to use for, for my students? So essentially, find the language. Again, uh, we're going to go with Spanish. I'm just going to choose one from here. And if you click on the sum, if you click on play, it's just going to open this option, set of options there. Now, the first set of options you want to use if you want to obviously practice maybe yourself because you're learning a new language. Uh, but here at the bottom, there's two, and this is the important one. So you're going to click on customized um, exercise. And then once you've done that, so I mean, if you've done Spanish, I am sure that you've used it. Um, it is one of those zones that we use to reinforce infinitives. Um, so if I'm teaching year six or year seven, it's just a great recap of like AR. Uh, ER and IR endings in, in Spanish. So I'm just going to, again, I'm going to blank some infinitives here. There's quite a few of them, and it's a very repetitive song, but we live songs are repetitive because th this means it sticks. Uh, that's the idea, isn't it? So we're going to go through this, blanking whichever words we want our students to practice and learn. And I'm just going to do a few, there you go, because again, there's loads and loads of infinities. I may have even missed um, a ton of them. Uh, but once we're ready, what we need to do is we need to give it a title. And once we give it a title, we can then, I usually assign the name of my class to, to make it a bit clear. Uh, but once we give it a title, we can then hopefully, share it with our students. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So give it a title. You can see the answers are there. They're actually in the right order. Click on uh, create exercise and it will automatically, it will automatically add it to your teacher's area. Um, now, to share it with your student, uh, you click on share, which you can see here. Uh, now it, it does it does allow you to integrate if you're into IT you can you can certainly play with this uh, but I would tend to recommend that you just simply copy you copy that this is not the best background but hopefully you can see that white 
link, that in uh, that hyperlink there. Anyway, you, you copy that and hopefully you can then share it with your students. Um, if, if, if that, that should work again, remember about the issues that might potentially come from the fact that if you're logging in uh, with your normal email, you may be asked to uh, reset your password again every time. So that's not probably the best um, of things, uh, but there you go. So another thing about uh, lyrics gaps, which I really, really love. Now this is something that lyrics training does not do, but you may notice that every time I go and hover just uh, over a particular word, it underlines it. That means if I click on it, you can see there. Um, so this integrates, you can see at the bottom, it integrates one of my famous dictionaries of all times. Um, it integrates word reference. And uh, this is a fantastic thing because students can actually go through that zone and, and they could be highlighting words and, and finding out the meaning of those words. So it will tell you usually, if it's a verb, it will tell you uh, which verb it is, which person it is. You can actually see it there. If you want to go into detail about that grammar, and I, it will also tell you which infinitive that that that, that verb refers to because this is an irregular verb, so it's going to be ir, um, and then translations, additional translations. Sometimes you get a bit of context as well, like here, compound forms. So very very interesting. So remember, you want to be sharing that with your students uh, so that they can get the work done. Now there is something about about uh, using lyrics gaps with. Um, as opposed to uh, lyrics training, does not allow you to put automatic, automatically the answers below um, so that students can choose those answers um, in a random order and then select them so that they can go into those gaps. So what happens is, is when you click on print, you get two options. If you, if you have that ticked, show answers, it's probably not something you want to do because what it does, I'm not sure why, what it does is, it allows you to see the answers in the right order um, as they as they should go in the gaps. That's probably not the most, you know, ambivalent of all. Uh, but then you have the option to similar to um, to what we did earlier uh, with the two columns and, and being a bit uh, more environmentally friendly, if you like. So you can you can get that done. Um, what's the key? The key thing here is that you're essentially asking your students to predict. Uh, and guess the spelling, which is a fantastic skill to develop. If you haven't haven't yet like used something like this uh, when you you've played a song to your classes, I highly highly advise you uh, to do it. Um, just literally ask them to spell it out, even if they haven't been exposed to that word before in in their in their lives. Uh, it's just a great way to pick up those those patterns, those phonics uh, and pronunciation. And sometimes what we we find is that at GCSE level, especially the listening tends to be quite, quite challenging for many of our students. And this is a great way to get them started. Uh, so yeah, think about using predictive listening skills where students are actually guessing instead of just choosing from a list of words at the bottom. It's, it's just an alternative to the traditional sort of gut feel activity. All right, so uh, now moving on to a uh, slightly different site. Now, Lyrics Translate is not essentially a sort of language learning site, music-based language learning site, if you like, as, as such. Um, it, it's just um, a music site where you can find translations of songs. Uh, so, so in that respect, uh, as teachers, we're going to have to take some of the contents from that website and, and adapt them and, and use them in our lessons. But I'm going to show you some of the ideas and certainly the ways in which I've used uh, lyrics translate. Um, the only thing you have to do is at the very top there, you just find the artist and it's, it's pretty easy to use. Find the artist, find the language. So what I tend to do is I would stick to an original song. The last time I used this was with uh, Louis Capaldi, um, you know, famous song and uh, someone you loved. And, and then I chose the English uh, and, and, and the Spanish and, and I was able to see both. Uh, if I can actually show you in context it would certainly help uh, so lyrics translation lyrics translate so i'm going to do exactly what i did not long ago where i got the song here so obviously you get the original here um, um and then you get a variety of different translations that you can choose from uh, now those numbers that you see there 
are different people that have provided a translation for this one. Uh, I, I would always advise that you go and check that translation. Uh, the translations are generally quite accurate and, and very, very good. Um, sometimes you may find that there are some mistakes here and there, but, but I think it works very, very well overall. Okay, so that means that three different people have provided uh, Spanish translations, the same goes for French, Greek, and, and, and we've got we haven't got German here, um, but you, you've got you've got loads of uh, different options there. So I'm just going to choose number one there, um, and what you see is uh, is immediately going to allow us to have a different column there, where everything is just going to be highlighted, but it's going to be highlighted, showing you both versions, both, both translations. Uh, so this is handy in the sense that you know exactly where, where the stuff that's being mentioned in, in, the, in the English or in the Spanish or the other way around is on the other side of the screen, on, 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 the, other, on the other language. So uh, this is something that you may want to, to play with a bit. Uh, but just going back to what I wanted to show you. So these are some of the ways uh, in which I've used uh, Lyrics Translate um, over the years. And I'm going to be breaking it down for you, just to give you an idea. And I, I think the key thing here is I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm, I'm very, um, I'm very used to coming up with resources very quickly because I've done it many, many times. But I, but I think you can genuinely, you can genuinely produce a resource out of, out of nothing uh, very, very quickly if you use this website. How how can you do that? Well, I'll show you very quickly. Um, so one of the things that we can do is uh, analyzing codemates and near codemates, so words that look similar in both languages. And in this case, I chose, usually I, I would tend to choose sort of my favorite songs, but I, I sometimes would ask the children to, and um, you know, what is it that you'd like to listen to next week? And I, and I would say to them, well, that's maybe highly inappropriate. And unfortunately, won't be able to bring the lyrics for that. But uh, if you give me another choice of song, then by all means. Uh, so this is just an example of uh, an Imagine Dragon song called uh, Bat Liar. And what I did is essentially at, at the most basic of levels, really, trying to get students to analyze uh, something in both languages and, and finding similarities and finding patterns. And so can you actually tell me what's the word that, that looks alike in the other version of this song? So students, are very quick at doing this and as silly as it may seem they really need to be trained on how to analyze this when it comes to a, um, you know sitting or reading exam it, it, it will certainly go a long way in ensuring that they can get those extra marks um, so that's just an example analyzing cognates and near cognates there in sons uh, another example that i've um, done with lyrics to translate is the use of bilingual gut fills um, i love this and uh, you can also you can also call this parallel text. So you've probably seen them before. Uh, but what I do is I just, I just blank a lot of stuff all over the place. Um, so the answer that's in the English version of the stone is gonna be in the Spanish and vice versa. And, and the students just need to go um, along uh, you know, the, the various different uh, gaps and, and trying to work out exactly what goes where. Um, now, I have to say that if I give them something, something in English, now I'm taking for granted that there'll be 90% of the class that knows the lyrics uh, by heart of this song in English. So maybe, maybe in, in terms of the choice of song, uh, you, you want to choose something if you really want to give them a huge talent, something that may, you know, they, they, they may have never like sort of heard before that they, they may not have been exposed to, um, to something like, like a song that they've never, they've never heard. So you want to use that, I suppose, in, instead of something that's really, really obvious. Again, if you want to give them a bit of a talent, that is. Um, another think that I have um, tried out with my classes and, and that works quite well uh, is the audit rearrangement activity in which you just take a paragraph from lyrics training and that's what I meant earlier. It's, it's all about being time efficient. You don't want this to take you ages to prepare. So this doesn't take me a, a long time by, by, by all means. So yeah, there you go. Numbers, letters, can you match them up? You know, this is a Sheeran. Um, so yeah, it, it helps you in a way helps you connect with your students because you're using resources that, um, or songs that they're, they're listening to because they're, they're being played on, on the radio every single day, a million times. And, and that's what makes the difference maybe. I, I know there's a, there's a big thing about using authentic resources um, 
and, and I believe it's, it's just fantastic if you can bring in authentic resources. But I, I, this is this is as, as valid and, and efficient as well, just trying to connect with your students. Now, another one, just moving on to a different activity. Here's a missing words. And we've got essentially, it, just to make it clear, uh, as you have, um, put like a gap there or like a like an underscore there um, just to indicate but the, the the brackets there mean that there's one word missing out of the sequence in English so if it says you are my fire then that's going to be me fuego or me for my um, so essentially where, wherever there's a, a number it, it just refers to the amount of words that are missing you, you could slightly modify this and, and again just put like an actual gap in there and tell your students to fill it in. It's just another idea. This works very well because I think whenever you're structuring a sentence and it changes once once you've translated it from English into another language, and certainly in Spanish, French happens as well with the, the adjective order of, of having, most likely you'll always find the, the noun followed by the adjective as opposed to English. And, and it makes them think about the order of things. Um, so just an idea there. Uh, moving on to reading comprehension in the target language. So what I what I did here, and and this was my my <laughs> this was my attempt at replicating the target language questions that sometimes appear. Uh, they don't appear sometimes. They are, they're actually part of the reading GCSE assessment, where you actually get a text, and then you have to from that text in fair meaning. I just literally copy the answer because everything is in the target language. And I thought, why don't I test my students on that? Because they're literally missing and, and losing so many marks um, in, in this particular type of, of activities, um, especially they're losing loads of marks. So I took a cold play song uh, and then asked them some questions that were really obvious if you understand what the question is asking. And even at times if you're not, um, you're not thinking that is obvious. You can literally just by going on the right verse where the info is, you can you can you can infer the meaning and you can get your answers written down. So just another idea there for you. Uh, now, uh, last um, sort of idea for for lyrics translate that you can use is a translation analysis of, of, of dual versions, um, which is not so much to do with lyrics translate, it's more about these nations where you get uh, different countries where the same language is spoken, but then the versions of the Disney stones actually differ. Uh, this is just an example of uh, uh, a Mulan son. Um, and what I did was, you know, I asked questions and, and asked them to compare both texts and how, how certain translations uh, you, you could find that there were certain nuances, but sometimes there's huge changes, huge, huge changes about the way things have been translated in a particular way and why. And, and, and then we could cover the idea of rhyme. Of course, you cannot translate everything literally. Some more questions here. And this is uh, Moana in, in Spanish. So, so you can see there the, the Latin American version. By the way, the previous one was the, you know, Quebecois. So it was French in, in Quebec. The other one being French spoken in Europe in France mainly and uh, Switzerland so um, and Belgium and, and this is just an idea of similar sort of activity but in but in Spanish so again you can, you can see that you can definitely explore those uh, you can explore those a bit more um, similar sort of stuff where I'm asking across the two very the, the translations in, in, in Spanish and in Latin American Spanish uh, where are the actual translations? Can you find them? So just to give you a few ideas there, hopefully you'll, you'll be able to then integrate into your, into your teaching. Right, so um, what we can do then is uh, I'm going to show you how to integrate uh, the live edition of uh, lyrics uh, when you're playing songs on Spotify. Uh, so the element here of, you know, actually, the element here of actually teaching languages uh, it is, it's not it's not so obvious but this is more to do with the the, the element of exposure to, to music in a foreign language so i think one of the things that we we want to be doing is to encourage our students to do a lot of uh, a lot of this stuff outside of 
of the lessons but there's only so much stuff that we can bring into our lessons we, we're always very bound to you know the, the limitations the obvious limitations of having to stick to a scheme of work and and, and i appreciate that um, a lot of the stuff that, that can happen the magic can happen sometimes outside of the, the languages classroom and, and we need to try and certainly we need to try and encourage our students to be able to do that so that is super important so i'm just going to show you I know that I mentioned in, in the information about the, web, the, the webinar that there was going to be an app called Genius. Um, I'm not going to be talking about Genius because it's, it's, it's sort of discontinued with Spotify. So it's not really working that well. But instead, I'll be talking about Music Match or Music X Match and how you can integrate it with both Apple Music and Spotify. And in order to do that, I'm going to do it on the iPad because we need to pretend that it is actually one of my students accessing the iPad and going onto the Spotify um, you know, app and, and finding a song. So uh, we're going to do that. Just going to open here my app and I'm going to share my iPad with you guys. Hopefully this will work and I can show you how to do that. Yeah, this seems absolutely fine. So I'm just going to try and connect. And hopefully in about five seconds, you should be able to see my iPad. If not, that means I have failed miserably. There you go. Is it working, please? Uh, this the moment we can, ah, oh, yeah. Oh, that's can, you, can you see the iPad yeah. now? Yeah, I, yeah we I can, yeah. Very yeah, yeah, delayed. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Excellent. So um, now how do you integrate live subtitling of, of songs on, on Spotify? This is the question. Now to do that, you first need to have an app called Music Match or Music X Match. And you can see, you can see it here. I'm just going to open it. Um, now, there's a, there's a premium version that you probably don't want to Oh my gosh, what was I listening to earlier? I was just going through a few examples there. Uh, so you probably don't want to be uh, paying for the premium, uh, but what it does essentially is it integrates the song, the music and the lyrics in just the one place. But you can use both free versions of the, of the app, so both this one and Spotify. Uh, so you can see here, it gives you information. It actually gives you loads of translations of, of songs too. Um, so this is Music X Match. At the bottom of it, you might be able to see that it says learn languages with translated lyrics. So this is going to be very similar to lyrics translate in the sense that, so that you get various different users that, that translate songs uh, that they like. Uh, but you need to have both apps open to make this work. All right, so I'm going to go onto the Spotify. Uh, this is my playlist that is uh, on my website. You can see here that I generated a playlist, well, various different ones according to grammar. So these are all tenses. Uh, what I did it was to compile loads of different songs into this. So I'm just going to go, I'm just going to play the one that we've got here. I believe this is the, to practice, this is the one that I chose to practice the, the gerund, yeah, the ing form um, in Spanish essentially way more relevant to um, you know GCSE students, A levels, um, um, A level students, etc. So I'm just going to then make sure that the sun is playing. Okay, the sun is playing. And then what I do is I go back to music X match. And at the bottom of it, it should oh it definitely it definitely kicked me out not sure not sure why that happened not sure why it happened but at the bottom of it once you go into music x match you should be able should be able to then analyze or, or just get access to live uh, subtitling of the song so i highly recommend that you try these two together i think i'm getting some some issues uh, joe because it's just sharing too many things at the same time now with the ipod and everything so um we'll leave the you know the ipod now just trying to stop sharing the ipad because otherwise this is not going to be very useful for the presentation okay so i'll just i'll just close that and we'll just move we'll try and move on to the next the next thing um now the last three uh, apps um, they're not necessarily music based apps but they do contain music um, and the way in which they work 
is that they have the ability to select videos from, from YouTube. And once you have selected a, a video from YouTube, you, you can then take it and you can do activities with it. Uh, now, teach of it, um, if you want to progress, uh, do some progress tracking for your students, then you're certainly going to have to uh, pay some money. Uh, this, they, they have some, some future videos they call. Uh, so if you go into TeachFit, you'll be able to see that some of them contain a start, uh, like a start, and, and that essentially means that the video is free. Uh, what you cannot do with that, you can see the star there. So that, that means the video is free, but what you cannot do is you cannot do any progress tracking. I mean, unless you tell your students that they need to send a screenshot of the activities that they've done. That just going to open, I had a few songs here as well, just, just, just to show you. This is not just songs, but I use it sometimes for songs as well. So very, very handy in that respect. Uh, I've got Bajo el mismo sol. Although this one, just, just going to choose one that's actually free. So let's go, let's go with this one here. So plus tard. And uh, once it opens uh, and you click on open resource, magic will happen okay so this is a brilliant site because it will generate your uh translation actually actually a dual one so so you get i'm going to turn off the tutorial uh so you'll be able to see exactly where you are in the sun but you'll be able to change that so that it alternates so you can see at the bottom between the french and the english this is really really handy and then at the in the top sort of right corner, you see the activities there. So this is what will happen if all the videos, if you were to have a, a subscription to the site, if you paid for it, then all of the videos would have this, this option here. So you have the ability to do all of these activities. Um, it, it is a brilliant, it is a brilliant site. And, and yeah, I mean, let me tell you, it's not just music that I use it for, uh, even though um, I'm very much into, into music and I do bring a lot of songs into, into the languages classroom and I set a lot of homework as well with music. But this is just for, for loads of other stuff, loads of amazing audiovisuals. And, and these guys are doing a, a great, great job. Uh, so yeah, teach it, just an idea there. By all means, just go ahead and, and explore it. Um, at, at the moment, just like I mentioned, uh, the ability to track down the progress that your students are making is very limited um, in the sense that you need to pay in order to be able to get that. Um, but moving on to sites where you don't need to fork out money to be able to do progress tracking, which is my main obsession here with music. But yeah, um, and it's gonna be part of my research and into my you know doctorate and everything. So I'm really, really interested in that. One of them is Edpuzzle. I'm not sure how many of you have seen uh, or come across this site uh, before, uh, but it's absolutely fantastic. And I'm just going to show you how I use it with my classes. Uh, classes. As opposed to um, teach of it, you can use it for free. There's a limit of uh, 20 videos, which I think is fair enough because when you have reached that amount of videos that you've created, uh, you can then you can then maybe delete some of those videos and, and, and then add a new one if you need to. But this is what the site looks like. What I really like about it, Puzzle is that it's super user friendly. Um, so it's very, very easy for your students to get uh, their heads around this. Uh, the last one we're going to see is way more complicated. So at Puzzle, I guess so you create your account uh, and then you have just essentially three options there at the top, um, which I'm going to be running through. Uh, and on the left hand side, uh, this is again, this is where the magic happens. What I love about this site is that they integrate YouTube. So when it comes to uh, copyright issues, there's not such thing as copyright because everything they take is from YouTube and they, they integrate it there. Uh, so um, this, is, this is really handy. Uh, so you click on YouTube if you want to access any videos from, from YouTube. Again, um, and in there, you will be able to type anything at all that you want to watch or that you want to set in terms of assignments or that you want to play with. Now, what happens is that if you click on the YouTube there, anything that you see below uh, is just things that other users from Edpuzzle have taken. So that means that automatically, if you were to type, I love this song in French, so let's go with this one. Um, if you were to type a song um, in French uh, and it does not appear there, 
it's it is not impossible to get in fact it's, it's pretty pretty easy and i'll show you how to do that so i have found this on and what this tells me is that all the teachers have used it uh, however if i cannot find it remember this is all on youtube then the only thing i need to do is go into youtube and in there there are a million okay. So this is just an example. Um, and in there, I'm just going to go for one of the Kevin and Carla views. I love this cover band. Uh, and we can go for, yeah, let, let, let's go for perfect. Okay, so what you do then is you just copy the link. Copy it, right click, copy it. You can use control C if you prefer. And then you go back to a puzzle and then you can copy there. Literally, you copy the whole link there. And you copy it and then it will automatically generate the video for you. Okay, so this is really important. Um, remember, if the video is not there once you've typed the keywords, it does not mean that it doesn't exist. It means that no activities have been generated for that video, but you can be the first one to do it, of course. So let's go back to, to Papa Ute. Um, and when I click, when I click, so I found it now. So when I click on it, what you can see here is, especially if you scroll down, you can see a few people there. Actually, there's more than just a few. There's quite a lot of people. And, and what this tells you is the people that have added the video to their profile and the people that have created an activity uh, to know uh, about like exactly how many tasks within the video the person has created, you can see you can see it there and, and it will tell you. So that's 16 there. We've, we've got 14, 17. Uh, now, because I was running through this uh, a few days ago, I particularly liked the one that Suzanne Lambert ha had created, the activity that she created. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on her video because again, I'm, I'm, we want to be time efficient. I mean, sometimes we don't have the time to plan. And, um, you know, it's lovely to, to see that other people have done the work and it's lovely to share. And in this case, uh, Suzanne Lambert has done, has done the hard work for me and I'm just going to take that. I'm, I'm very grateful. But I want to see, I want to see exactly what sorts of activities she's done. So what you do is it will tell you here, mainly, because this, this, this has only got two different types. It's got multiple choice, or open-ended okay so it's pretty simple but if you click on this thumbnails here that is thumbnails if you click on them you can see exactly what activity it is that that this teacher generated for this for this group for this class all right so his group but uh, I think he's not watching anything I mean there's a TV there but I think it's gonna be around maybe around Cool. So, and then you can continue watching And every time a thumbnail appears, it will prompt the student with a new question, okay? Alright. Qu'est-ce que le fils fait? Uh, well, let's do one as well. Geo foot. Certainly not. Okay. So, this is this the interface for the student okay this is how the student sees the video that you have generated all right so if i go back to the main page here just to show you now it's a couple of things the first one is how do you create your own video how do you generate your own video so so earlier we're just taking on perfect here and i actually copied the link so i'm going to do exactly the same thing again because i'll show you from scratch how to generate an activity and this will now be your video that you can actually play with so it will say why cut a video uh save time by cutting any sections so you can definitely move along the bar there you go so move that one because if you don't click on that one it's gonna do what, what, what it did to me all right so you click on that maybe it is way too long again a puzzle it's fantastic not just for music it's just absolutely everything anything and everything that you can find on youtube you can use here um but this is where the magic happens of course um voice over i don't tend to use this but maybe a little explanation that you want to add you can do at certain points uh throughout the video but this is where the magic happens okay so so you get 
you get two types of questions. Mainly, I do not consider the use of notes, um, you know, of, of, of any anything that that would would serve me as as something super useful for my classes. So I use these two. So you get multiple choice. So what you do is so it's multiple choice question. Creo en tu amor por mí. All right. Translate this sentence. And then you can add different choices there and then you save it. Now, remember that every time you're adding a new task, this will automatically be generated at the actual time where you've got that thumbnail. Um, so it, it makes it pretty obvious because the moment you add something, you can see that the thumbnail has been added. Not only that, you can also see that it's giving you the time exactly. Um, so you know that six seconds into the sun, you will have to complete that, all your students will have to complete that multiple choice question. All right, and, and this is how it works out. The, the other question, if I click on continue, so the other questions are the open-ended questions, which uh, it won't, there's no self-marking here. Um, so the ability to potentially, uh, the, the ability to potentially correct this uh, whilst the students are doing it at home, it, it's a bit more difficult. So um, potentially, if, if possible, if you want to get everything self-marked automatic, automatically by the, by the website, then by all means, you can, you can stick to multiple choice questions, okay? Um, and there's an idea there for you, but again, just like I said, it, it could be anything and everything, as long as you can find it in YouTube. I mean, you can see here in my content that I've got loads of different things. Uh, it's, not, it's not just songs that I've used, but, but there you go. Now, how do you go about setting work for your classes? Well, it, it's, it's fairly obvious in the sense that there is an option there at the top called My Classes. As you can see, if I click on My Classes, it will show me some of the classes that I, that I have got in, in my school. Now, because I don't want to be showing a student's names, um, you can see there's a slight difference between this one, seven, um, and C French, because we, uh, we use airport codes in my school. Um, you can use that one. You can see that this one I generated by using, if you're familiar with Google Classroom, that is the logo for Google Classroom. Uh, so this was generated by Google Classroom. Um, and then the other ones, do not have Google Classroom, they, they just have something called open. Um, if you don't use Google Classroom, then, then you need to use this option here. In fact, it's sometimes way easier to use the open classroom option because what it does is that it allows students to just log on with a link. They don't even need to have an account. Yeah? And it literally, they're, they're two clicks away from being able to access the video with the work that you've set. If you do it via Google Classroom, by all means, you probably want to double check that your students are confident enough with, with the use of technology remotely. Um, so just an idea there. Uh, so I'm just going to generate a new class just to give you an example. I'm going to create a new class here. It says, do I want one uh, with Google Classroom or do I want to just uh, create a new, I just want a new class. I'm not going to be using Google Classroom. So this one is going to be called, again, conference and uh, I'm not going to give it a description and then you get to you get two options here um, you get the classic one and you get the open one now if you don't want your students to to, to log in and to have their own accounts etc then you want to be clicking on that option there um, if you have Google Classroom and then you want to be going onto that tab. Now, I'm not going to be going onto that tab today, um, but you can play with the site certainly. And if you use Google Classroom, again, you, you can definitely explore that option there. So once you click on open, okay, so remember add new class, give it a name, click on open. Once you click on open, this, this little box here, now I wouldn't tick it because it, if Edpuzzle is generating your students' nicknames, who knows what names Edpuzzle is going to generate? How on earth are you going to find out which student did the work um, uh, and who that student was? So you don't want to take that 
uh, if you want your students to enter their, enter their own name. So I'm just going to create it. Go ahead and create. There you go. Create class. It's going to generate it in a matter of seconds. And now I can see my new class there. Now, when you want to get your students to access any videos that you've set, you will need to assign a video, essentially. And once you assign a video, you can then share it with your student. So it's going to go back to my content. Remember, three main sections here, content, great book, my classes. At the moment, we're only interested in these two, content and my classes. So back to content. There you go. So I just want to go to the video that I chose earlier. No, I haven't got it. So just to show you. I find it. It's not in my content, that's why I cannot find it. You find it now? Yes. Okay, so click on the video. Um, you want to be able to have this in, in your content if, for, if you want to edit it. But likewise, you don't need to. It could just be someone else's creation. And it's essentially a matter of clicking on a sign. And then once you do that, you choose the group. And I want to I want to do it with this group here, and then you click on assign. There you go. So it's now being assigned. So as students are entering their their details, then you, I can see exactly their progress. I can see exactly how many of those of those um, you know activities they've completed, and whether they've, they've done it successfully, whether there's there's any issues. You can set the time. Yeah, and, and you can set many other things. As you explore the site a bit further, these are things that you may want to um, you know, work um, also with a bit. It says prevent skipping. Now you get a lot of cheeky students out there who will probably just rush through the whole thing. Now if you click that on, it means they're gonna have to watch the whole video. I mean, there's no way around it. They, they, they cannot skip tasks, they cannot skip. So, fantastic way to get them to watch the whole thing. If you turn this on, be careful because it might potentially generate uh, the subtitles, especially if you're doing music, okay? If you're not, it's, it's a great way to, to add live subtitling, like closed captions to your videos so that students know exactly what's, what's been said and what's been said in, in English. Um, um, if you if they're watching a, a French video or Spanish or German, or whichever subject you teach. Okay, so you may want to potentially click on that. Now, we have assigned a, a video to a class. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to make sure that our students are able to access the, access the class. Remember that this was an open class. So that means everyone with a link can access. So I'm going to go ahead and generate a link. Pretty obvious here, it says share assignment. Ah, share assignment, let's go. So the, here's my link, okay, so I'm just gonna copy it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what this looks like from the student's perspective. So what do they, what are they looking at? What do they see when I send them a link and how do they log on to do the work? Because this is really important. I'm sure you're very interested in finding out what are my students going to see? Are, are they going to find it really, really hard to access this? And the answer is no. This is a pretty, pretty easy site to get your head around um, and your students should be able to do it no problem in a couple of ticks, uh, in a couple of clicks. Um, so there you go. So, um, that's the click. I send it with them. So this is this is me pretending I am the student, uh, just very enthusiastic about music. Mr. Fernandez has just said some work, and I just really want to go and check it. So let's go. Let's click on that link that he's put and show my homework, which is what we use at my school, uh, or on OneNote. And there you go. So so you get the conference uh, here. That that's the title of my class. Uh, you found an open class, and and then it says that. This is a teacher and you've got a class code which is not relevant at all. And then in the nickname, what you do want to make sure is that your students uh, are entering their, their first names and, and surnames, etc. That that is really important. But you don't want you don't want them to be entering something random because otherwise you won't know who they are. So here's my student that is really, really keen to get the work done. Uh, so he's gonna join my open class and automatically the assignment will appear on their screens and they can click on play and they'll be able to complete the activity. Okay, um, just 
and maybe questions about I, I completely appreciate that this it will take probably a bit more time for some people to to get familiarized with with the ways this in which these sites are, are, are actually designed and the way it works but what i have to say is that for me the thing that helps me the most is certainly the idea of not 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 simply adapting everything that i see but just literally taking something that someone else has created because it makes it a bit easier because if you find something here on youtube and this is not even a song i'm just going to go for this one you just need to literally assign it i mean if you copy it or if you edit it it's going to save it to your content um, and then you can assign it for there but you can also assign it from here um, and, and you can see at the bottom again the amount of people that have have done activities with the video and you can run through those and find the one that's the most interesting that you like the best or you can simply edit it okay now so here's a puzzle for you um uh, i hope that you you know you play with it a bit and i hope that you really enjoyed it, it it's been a discovery of mine of mine over the last month and and i'm, I'm certainly really really enjoying certain work through through a puzzle not just again not just with music uh, i know that this is all music based but but also it allows you to take anything and everything from youtube okay so really 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 handy Okay, on to the last one, but potentially the hardest one. What I would recommend is that before you try ISL Collective, you get your head around a puzzle because once you know how to use those thumbnails to add activities at various different points in the video, it's it's just the the the, the easiest of interfaces. Once once you've done that, if you want to give yourself a bit of a challenge and you're really into IT then you can try our ISL Collective, which is a bit harder to use. So I'm, I'm going to be showing you that now. That's going to be the last thing I do today, um, sadly. Uh, but there's not a lot of time for all the things that I want to be showing you. So um, ISL Collective, there you go. Let's open this. Yeah, when you, um, when you try and log on to this site, you do get the option here of actually signing in with your Google account uh, now for those who have the the g suite package and you're using google classroom this might be of help but if not you can you can use your own your own email um, i hope it's logged me onto my account there i'm not sure whether it has it appears it has because it says my favorites and my creations etc now this is um, this contains various different sections. The one that I'm going to be uh, working with today is just the one called video lessons, okay? Um, which is what I what I said earlier. It works in a similar way to a puzzle, uh, but it, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of worksheets and powerpoints and things like that, and it's actually completely free. So if you haven't um, if you haven't yet come across this site, I highly recommend you to to have a look at it. Um, now here's the first thing you want to be doing. Uh, if you want to be working in English because uh, you're uh, you're doing EAL or um, maybe you you just teach in English, you're not teaching any Spanish or French or German or Italian, etc. Uh, then you want to make sure that that flag is there. Uh, just it indicates that that's the language uh, in which the resources are going to you know are going to be made available for you. Um, so um, I I want to select if I'm if i'm doing it with my students i want to select french or spanish which are the two languages that i teach and it's very important that it's, it's, it's a little thing that you might not notice but you won't be able to find the resources or, or create them uh, so i'm, I'm going to click on spanish um, and you can see here um i just i, I was playing with it um and, and i created uh, i created some work the other day uh, but if you click on the the lessons the video lessons in spanish here uh, you'll get some examples. You get you'll get people telling you, explaining you how the site works, which is very handy. Um, and again, just like I mentioned earlier, uh, this is not just about music. It's it's about everything that is on YouTube, and you can take it and you can adapt it. And that is the that's the beauty of it. Um, so once you have found um, a video um, that you want to be using, uh, then you can you can have a look at it uh, so if we go on to let's go into this one here which is actually a song from mana a mexican band that was created not long ago the most recent videos uh, that were generated um, on the site would, would always appear in, in first in the order and um, uh, you can see here 
you can see here that this little number is like again similar to a puzzle just like with your thumbnails but instead of using those um, sort of drop let's they use numbers here and those numbers indicate at which point in the video you're going to be asked a question so let's play it a bit uh, okay can i get that to play well this is actually testing my ability to spell this missing word so Juan ya nunca regresó Juan never returned that's a translation into English okay got it right and then you can continue and do the rest okay this is just this is just a video that um, I have found that someone has uploaded that I, I would never put a video especially to do with the Sun uh, just just like that with just like a like a background and some music uh, I might as well use some, some other tools to do that. Um, but just an idea there, uh, what I would tend to use a lot with these two sides is lyrics videos where you actually just get the music in the background, but the lyrics are, are, being, are being displayed. It really allows you to test uh, quite a lot of things um, to do with grammar, vocabulary, pointing out certain structures within a sentence, etc. So remember, this is a video that someone uploaded um, and obviously, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be continuing um, with this video. We're going to be going onto onto something different. But if you wanted to use it, uh, then you just need to click on Copiar y Editar, Copy and Edit, and then from there, you can you can change it if you don't like it. You can, you can add different activities. Uh, if you love it, then by all means, you can automatically assign it as homework, which we're going to get to in a few minutes. All right. So let's let's go back. So just going on to uh, video lessons here. Remember, this is where you find various different videos. Uh, you can find, you can type some keywords here. It's not, it's not going to find, a lot of the stuff you want to find is it's not going to be here if you type the keywords. Instead, what you want to do is you want to click on upload. Because once you click on upload, it's going to allow you to have that ability to create your own video lesson. All right, so let's click on there. And it says add the URL from your YouTube. It, it also works with, with um, Vimeo. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go here. And again, this is a lyrics video. This is, this is the example of a perfect lyrics video. Uh, and it's a song perfect by, by Sheeran, um, sung by Kevin and Carla. So just gonna copy the link there. Again, just, just want to use this. This is the one that I'm going to be playing with. Um, and once I play that, it says, create a, a video lesson so let's go ahead it will show you have a tutorial so it it's once you get your head around uh, these tutorials and you, you've done it a couple of times uh, then you should be getting better at it uh, but i'm just gonna close this and say that do not show me that tutorial ever again because i know how it works inside out um this is how it really, really differs from a puzzle because here you do not have just the two options of the, the open-ended question and uh, also the, the multiple choice. You have many more and this is what makes it so exciting. Uh, so you've got uh, a gap fill there. You've got at the correct wrong word question. Uh, you can multiple choices as well, multiple choice questions, find the extra word. You can listen and tap the word on the screen. This is why it's so, so cool, because uh, you're listening to it and stop the lyrics at a certain point and say, in that sequence of lyrics, which word means such and such. Okay, so just an idea there. You can add an open-ended question, of course, there. You can do a match-up. Um, you can also click, if you're doing visuals, not just with, obviously, songs, because it's, it's not as obvious with songs, but if you're doing visuals with the video, you can, you can ask your children to point at various different parts of the screen where the information is that you want you wanted to maybe analyze um, so just just really important there uh, and once you do that well again once you're ready click on the on the plus sign and it will start adding your activities um, this will always generate it will always generate closed captions and titles in the language that you're working remember we're working with spanish there at the top you can see it in the flag it will always generate those subtitles automatically and there is no way this is an issue with this site there is no way to remove them 
because if I'm using lyrics videos with my uh, with my students, then sometimes I like to hide those subtitles in in Spanish. Um, at times I may need to have them there, at times I may not need to have them there, but it's just something that you want to be playing with, okay? And Edpuzzle does allow you to add or remove if, as, as you wish. Okay, so just, just an idea there. So I'm, I'm, just going to, I'm just going to show you the song that I was playing with. This is actually something that I was editing not long ago. Yesterday I was playing with it a bit. Um, and in there, you can see that I added a few activities. So if I click on edit, you will be able to see a breakdown of what I did with this song. So if I click on the numbers, so for the first one, I was asking students which tense that was. Um, so the song goes, as estado, hablando, hablando, hablando. Um, and I wanted my students to, to, to be tested on, on their knowledge of tenses. So I did that. Uh, and then for number two, again, was the gerund ending for ER and IR verse. And they had to click on the right choice. This uh, put in the right order, sort of uh, uh, where I gave them all the complement, uh, sort of um, direct complement particles there in Spanish. And, and ask them to put them in the right order from me, de, lo, la, nos, os. Um, lo, it should be los or las. Um, so essentially just, just something something else. It really varies the, the amount of things that you can do. Another one, maybe an, an open-ended question here. In this one here, I asked students to actually select the right answer for this, from the screen. So I, I'll just show you this one. Okay, so in there, I'm not going to be able to show you because I'm not actually using the preview. And if, if I pre, oh, I can show you. So I asked students to highlight for me the word for someone out of the whole sequence of words in the text. You can see I cannot actually remove it, but you can see that I have highlighted it there. So there you go. There's an option there for you. Now, well, last thing today before, before we leave, um, how do you share work with your students once you have created a son? It, again, it could be a different sort of resource, doesn't have to be a son. How would you go about doing that? Right, so first of all, let's go back to it. You want to be using a video, any video would do that you're interested in. So I'm just gonna go to the videos again. Secondly, once you have selected the video, you want to be going to the bottom of the video where there is an option called Assign as Homework. And in Assign as Homework, you will be able to type the name of your class and you will be able to generate the URL code for that class. Um, so if I type it, this is one of my French um, groups. Um, so if I type it, Nothing happened. Let's, let's do it again. Create class. Oh yeah, it, it did generate it there. And it will allow you to copy that URL, which you will then share with your students. Uh, and just like I did earlier, now let's pretend that I'm one of the students uh, going on to the site. So we're going to be clicking on that and then Yes, you're going to be asked as a student, you're going to be prompted with this box, which will say, create an account. And, and I can foresee the certain groups, issues, when it comes to generating usernames and passwords, uh, but some of them are pretty good at that, so you may want to give that a go. Um, once you have created your account, it will essentially load the video, as you can see here, uh, and they'll they'll run through that video they'll click on it and then it will generate sort of like a, a score that a student has managed to produce out of all of those activities that you've created um and yeah so plenty of stuff today is to recap these are all the things that we've seen i would have uh, loved to do many other uh, many, many other things with you and cover many other apps uh, but i think you know there's opportunities maybe i even 
brought my guitar here but i knew i was i wasn't going to be able to play anything um because uh, it's just so much to pack uh, but yeah maybe show and tell opportunity with helen and joe in the future or any other potential webinars coming up but we can potentially you know show all the things um but yeah thank you thank you so much um you know for your time i really appreciate it. and and if there are any questions you can always go onto my website and it, it, it would be lovely to hear from from you if you're using any of these ideas and it would be lovely to get some feedback as to whether it works or not for you that was fantastic Paco thank you ever so much for sharing all these great up. websites that's great we've got a couple of questions if that's okay we yeah, should first of all just say thank you to um, first of all because I know that there are some people who were you know had to go unfortunately who are writing how wonderful it was so we've still got loads of people in the room and I'd love it if people could um, open up their webcams open up their audio and it would be lovely to give you a nice round of applause. We've got, um, we've still got, uh, we had about 31 people on the um, live stream. And I just publicly apologise to everyone that having spent ages on the live stream, I failed to put it into the event right invitation. So I've received a flurry of mails, but eventually everybody got there. So if you could all open up your, um, your mics and everything, and we can just give you a round of applause for a fantastic session, Paco. Thank you very much. Bravo, bravo. Bravo, bravo. Bravo. <laughs> I'd like to take a little picture of us as well. So if you'd like to, on the count of three, smile. Okay, so here it goes. And I've got two pages to do as well. So here's for page one. One, two, three. There we are. <laughs> then I put this onto the, the site. That's one, Alan. That was a lovely smile. And now onto the, now onto the next one. Oh, and Alan, you're on this one as well. For some reason, yeah. shifts like that. So, Helena, you're in the top left here. So here goes. And one, two, three. And lovely. Oh, we've got another. Oh no, that's right. That's great. Okay. So, uh, yes, it was wonderful. So Joe's going to ask some some questions under half half people. But I'm sure we were both writing um, that, yes, we need another session with you, Paco. We'd <laughs> like to have some more sessions. I'd be delighted, we'd... yeah. We need to and do it some would be lovely to... playing and singing along at some point. I think, actually, yes, to actually do <laughs> some music. Because I think we're there thinking, oh, yes, these are ideas to do. But probably we'd just like to listen to the music as well. So for you to mm. actually do a little lesson and teach us something with your with the songs would be lovely sometimes. So um, but just packed full of ideas. That was really, really good. Thank you ever so much. Thank you so much. And thank you to Joe for finding everybody and bringing everybody together. Paco is no actually problem. going to be coming to us um, live, weren't you, to the Tilt Conference. So Indeed. hopefully in April we'll be allowed yeah, to be. It's a shame that we didn't go ahead. Yeah, Let's hope we can allow to be together. <laughs> okay, so cool. over to you, Joe. Okay, so thanks ever so much uh, again, Paco. That was amazing. So we had um, quite a few questions. I've collected them all. Here. So we go through them one by one, if that's okay. So yeah. in the lyrics training site, um, yeah. I know you showed us about how to print the lyrics, but Candida was asking, how do you create a worksheet? I saw that uh, Paco had this additional box where you could create a worksheet. Or is that, is she misunderstood? Is it the same as what you showed us? Uh, no, I mean, essentially what you do is, um, you want me to share the screen again and run through yeah, that? Yeah, just quickly, if that's uh, okay. Very quickly, yeah, let's do that. Uh, so essentially what you do let's open it very quickly here is do you go to the bottom of the of the actual song where the lyrics are so once you have selected i'm just gonna i'm just gonna click on this one mm -hmm. that's something i can play now and then at the bottom there you'll be able to find that option called uh, print lyrics so once you click on that it will allow you to blank any words that you want to blank all right and it okay. will generate the answers at the bottom of the slide, but they will be they will be mixed up, okay? As opposed to lyrics caps, here you define the answers mixed up as you are adding them. Um, okay, so there's an option there. If you want to print it, then click on print now. But remember, you need to be using Chrome for these to have the same exact layout. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it'll be different. Every browser does it differently, okay? Uh, so and that's where you see this option only if you use chrome will you be able to see something exactly like what i'm actually screening right now all right 
That's great. That's great. Thank you. Uh, there's a, there's actually um, a free a uh, bit of freeware called um, Cute PDF Writer, which does the same thing. Cute PDF Writer, which allows you to export um, what you normally would print on paper as a PDF. So it's Cute PDF Writer, which I can put in the chat in a minute. Thank you for explaining that. Um, so we've also got the question, do any of the sites group exercises depending on what you want students to achieve, i.e. near future, adjectival agreement, etc.? Yeah, I didn't get didn't get onto that because uh, because of the the limitations and the time mm -hmm. um, but uh, there's an option on the lyrics gaps um again might as well just keep this sharing all the time I just yeah, yeah. That's fine. it's really worth it um there's an option here on lyrics gaps which i'm just gonna quickly go through it just to show you how it works um but this is what i said earlier it mm -hmm. is gonna prompt you all the time to log on again and sometimes if you don't have Twitter, it's going to take a while to do mm -hmm. that. Uh, so you click, you click on the sun uh, that you want to. This is, this is English, but it doesn't matter. Um, and then once you click on the sun, uh, you'll be able to see something, something here, which is called tags. You see tags. Um, and there, that means that if I click on that, it's going to show me it hasn't shown me anything because I've, I haven't chosen the right sun, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to choose another one to illustrate this. Um, this one, I think should work better. Yeah. You see this, this one in French now, it shows something called present simple below tags. What that means is that if I click on this and any other sun that has been created that contains a lot of present simple will then be shown and yet, it's every language here, but you just go and choose. All you need to do is, you know, find the right type for that. Um, I know I didn't share with people the details about my Spotify playlist, but if you're if you're in need of inspiration, this is only Spanish though. You can find this on my website. where I have got all of these organized by by tense. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's really useful, isn't it? Thank you. That's lovely. Um, right. Okay, the next question was literally, would Paco be able to share his, share his playlist French, Spanish per year group, please? I feel I'm always using the same song. So, so that person needs to check out your website. Yeah, just go uh, to my website. It's true that I don't have, I don't have it organized by year, uh, but within each category, there'll be certainly different levels of difficulty and, and sure. you can play with those and, and see exactly what it is that you want to do with your group. Fantastic. Okay, next question. Do students have to have accounts uh, for lyrics gaps or lyrics training? Uh, you're talking about the ability to use progress tracking or just simply simply doing gap fills because um, on, Both. On, on lyrics Both. gaps, yeah, on lyrics gaps, you can do progress tracking and yes, you do need to have an account um, or lyrics training. There's no other way. You can, you don't need an account, but there's, there's nothing really you can do other than taking a, a, a screenshot of your screen to show your teacher that you've completed the work. Uh, so yeah, the answer for lyrics training is you can do it without being logged on. Uh, pretty much you can do it on lyrics gaps too, but if you want to record those scores for your teacher, you certainly need to have an account. Okay. Is that true of Edpuzzle as well? Because I know you can create an assignment without, or I think I'm right in saying you can create an assignment without creating a class. Is that right? Yes, you, you can go on to Edpuzzle and literally find the video that you want. So th this has got nothing to do with languages, but you click on assign. And as long as you do have an account, you will be able to assign it to a class. But then if you do that, obviously it won't record the results of the, what the students have done, et cetera. You'd have to, so the difference between like doing that without having a class means that you can give the link to the students easily, but you can't uh, record all the answers. Is that right? Or their results? You can, you can, you can. Okay. Let's, let's go through okay. a, a different video randomly very quickly to, to illustrate that example. So Native Americans probably to do with history here. So assign, click on the class that you've created and generated. And then once you have generated that, just like I showed earlier, it will then allow me to share the assignment with that class. Um, because there's two ways to access this. You can, you can either tell your classes to go on a puzzle and give them the code for the class, or you can just literally share the assignment link, the URL with them, and it will automatically take them to the video that you want them to see. 
Right, so they don't need an account to be able to access they that video. They don't at all. Right, but they need to put an, their name in, presumably, so you can then see who has done yes, which. They do, they do need to use their names. Otherwise, there's no, I mean, there's no way for you as a teacher to be able to know exactly who, who it is that, that's done what. Sure. That's great. I, I didn't realize that. Thank you so much for clarifying. That's wonderful. Um, right. Uh, right. Can you change the language in word reference on lyrics gaps? Or does it do it automatically? Oh, yes, you can. You can. Um, it will... It will automatically pick up the language that you're working with, uh, but you can you can certainly change it. Uh, so it, very quick, I've got one one of them here. So there you go, wonderful tonight. Let's go on to this one. Eric Clapton doesn't really matter. Uh, now you click on the word, and at the very top, can you see it? Mm -hmm. English, and then you get a drop down list, and then that will help you translate it into any other language. So I want to translate it into French. Now <laughs> the thing is. The thing is uh, that it is only when you translate into English that you get that beautiful layout with war reference. Otherwise, it's going to be using something different. So it's only when you translate in, it, best to clarify, only when you're translating that word into English would you that then get the war reference layout. Okay. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, next question. This is like mastermind, isn't it? Really? Master I know. <laughs> Are there many, many more questions? Uh, just like there's just three, three more, three right. more. If that's okay, but I think I think people were waiting very patiently with the question. Oh yes, no, I'm not saying stop. I'm just. If that's that. okay, right. Next question: Does the grade book in Edpuzzle tell you how your class is done? Yes, absolutely. Okay. In fact, in fact, when when I break it down here into, I'm not sure what I can only I can only see just one there for some reason but you'll be able to see any students that have access to the video, you'll be able to see the scores and it will give a breakdown as well. If you go into that student, it will tell you exactly what it is that they did. And, and what is it? What, what is it exactly that they did? Wrong. And again, that would work without them having an account. Is that right? That is absolutely true. Brilliant. That's yep. fantastic. Okay. Um, two more to go. Can you, s I think this is the same question actually, but yeah. Can you see students marks in Edpuzzle if they enter with a link and don't have an account? So the answer to that Correct. is yes, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. Right. And the last question, does the teacher get a record of the score from the ISL website you showed, or would you have to ask the students to screenshot it to let you know? No, no, no. Uh, that's why I showed, I showed it earlier. Once okay. you have selected that as a homework and you have assigned it with that URL that you can see here, the, st the key thing here is that the student does need to have an account on ISL Collective as opposed to Edpuzzle. So mm -hmm. if the student doesn't have an account, there's no way for you to track down his or her progress. Um, but if the student does have an account, then you will be able to automatically receive a, a score. And, and, and the way in which you do it is right next to your username. Once the student has done it, you get like an alarm there, like a, like a logo, like a picture of an alarm. And it will tell, it's like a notification telling you that your class has submitted their work or that a particular student has submitted their work. Uh, that's how it works. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, we've had a couple of um, uh, questions in the chat just now from Alexandra. So first one, how do you introduce all of these websites to your classes, which is the part one? And part two, do you have a letter introducing them at the beginning of the year and ask approval to all the parents uh, as they need their first, and, first name and surname, e.g. GDPR issues? That's a good point, yeah. Um, the, the idea here is that if you're a school that has got the, the sort of G, the Google Suite package already, uh, then you will have by now sent out those, uh, those emails to parents and those letters. Um, so it's very important, yeah, you do have to cover your backs. So yeah, parents will have been notified uh, that, that there's going to be an element of like IT teaching going on, especially since uh, you know, all this remote teaching started happening. And uh, yeah, important, really important point. Do do certainly do certainly talk to your to your line manager and, and talk to talk, talk to your school about it. Um, I do believe that I, I, I do believe that there's there's a way around it in the sense that if you're gonna find that very very hard, you could certainly assign nicknames to your students as long as you know which student it is that you've assigned that nickname. Fantastic. Okay. Well, that's it. That's all the questions you did very well on mastermind. You got 10 points. Well done. <laughs> <laughs>
thought it was going to be something I was going to be able to answer. So I'm, 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 I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> so well done. Now you did brilliantly, Paco, joking apart. That was absolutely wonderful. And uh, yeah, I'm sure there were lots of new ideas there, but lots of people have never seen before. So thank you ever so much. It was, uh, it was great. And we'd love you to come back for part two as well and bring your guitar please yeah that'd be great oh yeah that'd be, yeah that'd be fantastic yeah very very happy to do that <laughs> still, cool. still, we seem like we're in for a few for a few more weeks until everything goes back to normal so lots of lots of opportunities certainly for, for yeah, more webinars for sure. to okay so for i'll sure. stop the recording now if that's all right and off we go stop recording 